Caution, the Mark Unger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. And, besides that, he's really weird. Welcome to the Mark Gunger Show with international marriage speaker and author of Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, Mark Gunger. This is your source for practical, down-to-earth marriage advice without all the over-spiritualization or romantic nonsense. And now the host of the Mark Gunger Show, Mark Gunger. With delirious joy, they've joined the Mark Gunger Show, the show that deals with all things concerning... Marriage. Marriage. I am your host, the one, the only, Mark Gunger. Joining me is always the ever-lovely and charming Lady Diane. And, of course, the amazing Philip James Gunger. Engineering the show, as always, the very talented but eerily creepy <laughs> Timothy Robert Ray. Pushing buttons, twisting knobs, and trying to stay awake during this incomprehensibly, immeasurably boring show. This is the show that handles your marital challenges. Relational conundrums and dating dilemmas that you can email to us at askask at markgungor.com. What do you got there today? A little survey out of Ohio State University says that daughters and sons of mothers who tied the knot young are more likely to want to marry early too, but Hmm. only if moms stayed married. Millennials whose moms divorced tend to want to move more slowly, perhaps in the interest of avoiding the mistake of their parents. Potential brides and grooms appear to be heavily influenced by their mother's marriages, divorces, and choices to live with a partner. After witnessing their parents' divorce, children of divorce may feel the need to take extra time and care in choosing a partner. Kids of moms who moved in with a partner after divorce had lower expectations that they would ever marry. It's important to note that delaying marriage past the early to mid-20s is not necessarily a prescription for marital success. Some research has found that there is little additional divorce prevention benefit to marrying past the ages of 22 to 25. You need to throw that in our book. Yeah. Okay. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Pull that? Yes. Pull that in there. We're doing a whole book on this and one of the arguments, this whole idea that marrying older, you have a higher success rate, I say, is baloney. Some of the statistics I've read are not true at all. In fact, some of the statistics when they say, you know, if you marry too young, you have a higher divorce rate, if the statistics they're citing are for very young marriages, 16 and 14 or uh, 17 17 and stuff like that's what they're citing Mm -hmm. and then they talk about the older marriages doing better but they always skip this age bracket this age bracket Mm -hmm. these is really the best ones is Mm -hmm. the and the ones in their early 20s so it's all skewed all this nonsense you're hearing and now this study says they're challenging even the assumption that the ones older have a better success rate it's just not true Mm -hmm. no benefit going past the age of 22 to whatever. What is it? What do they say? 22 to 25. Yeah. Absolutely. Marrying beyond Absolutely. 25. There is no additional benefit. These people think. Now, the one thing I haven't cut them slack for, I don't know if we even want to acknowledge this, in the aforementioned book, which is being worked on, uh, one of the reasons, you know, I'm saying that the primary reason that people are waiting is because of this culture that says you should wait and the obsession for needing money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this points out that one of the reasons is because they saw their parents' marriages fail. Mm-hmm. That might be fair to acknowledge. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. that I can see that. Yes. But they still need to know there's no additional benefit in waiting right. for the sake of waiting. So if your parents failed, your mom, you know, I don't want to do that to myself. Well, you know what the parents often will say to their kids is the reason? I got married too, too young. young. That's all. Don't yeah. you get married too young because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. We got married too young. Yeah. That's why it failed. And that's what they tell their kids. Yeah, but they're wrong. Yep. Whenever they say that, it's not true. That's not why people get divorced. There's no, there's no correlate. I got married too young. That's why my marriage failed. It's absurd. As absurd as some of my exaggerations. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not based in reality. You, your marriage doesn't fail. You're not going along and we're just great and everybody's getting along good. And I was like, wait a minute. We got married too young. We got to get a divorce. The marriage is, I mean, it's absurd. Mar- the age. They just think that they're not mature. They didn't know what they wanted. There's It'd all be the nice reasons. If it was that easy. Right? If you just said, you just wait till here, and right. boom. Yeah. 
The reasons of marriages fail is people get selfish. That's the reason. Now, one could argue that one is more inclined to be selfish younger than older. Perhaps. Perhaps, but I, but I but know I, many yeah, people who are chronologically advanced and they're still incredibly yeah. selfish. And here's the thing. Even the statistics that some of these people cite, which a lot of them just pull out of the air or they find a study that, when they say this group is a little bit better, we're not talking major differences here. We're talking right. a few percentage points, one way or the other. There is no evidence that even the young ones getting married are failing that much horribly than the older ones. As we're talking, you know, it's like some of these, uh, some of these cancer drugs and stuff mm -hmm. that you see. Uh, look, I get it. You're trying to survive. You're doing everything you can, but. Because uh, my wife's gone through all this, all these drugs, and they show you the studies, mm -hmm. and uh, the people who took the drug uh, did five percent better than the people who took a placebo. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, really, this is your version of success? Yeah, 5%. I could do five percent better than nothing. That's their version. So then everybody runs and they buy this. Okay, you're trying to survive. You'd rather have that extra five percent. I get it. Mm -hmm. But some of these things are just very bizarre. You know, it's not like we're talking, gee, you got a 75% chance of succeeding if you do it this way and only a 10% chance of no. succeeding that way. We're not talking. We're talking no. minutia, little tiny nonsense things. I think, as I point out in the book, that the dangers and the problems that are created from young marriage far exceed any perceived risk by far. Wait, uh, you just to say that again because I think you misspoke. The dangers of... Uh, uh, the bad things that happen as a result of delaying marriage. Oh, delaying marriage, because you said young marriage the first time. A far yeah. exceed yes. any perceived risk of marrying young, yes. which yes. is a perceived risk at this point. I yes. say it's without without substance. But uh, way more dangers, way more problems, delaying for the sake of delaying. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can't find anybody to marry to your 92, well, that's fine. It is what it is. But uh, that's not what they're doing. They're intentionally delaying for the sake of delaying and freely having sex along the way anyway, mm -hmm. which is part of the problem. That they, they pick up all these problems and all this baggage, and it all becomes so problematic. Better to marry young and do it right in the first place. All right. We will take a break and be back with your emails right after this. Bless you. Attend Mark's Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage event. Visit LaughYourWay.com for upcoming dates and locations. Oh, Mark on your back. <laughs> you're on, you're on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here to talk about Transition One, a transition program for young men and women, Christian young men and women, coming out of high school, taking a one year off to put God first in their lives before they start in college and career and everything else. I understand, and I, especially those who are into sports, that's not much of an option for them. I'd even challenge that. I'd, I'd just slow down, man. Everybody's so hurried to rush their kids off into college to make money, 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 money. And then they're shocked when they're in their 30s and 40s and their lives are falling apart and ending in divorce and their kids come home pregnant and everything else. Oh, what did we do wrong? Really? How about you slow down a little bit? You put them through college, they put them, or high school. You say, well, they're good Christian kids. Yeah, but all they've done is live off of your faith. They're... Uh, what's that word when you're uh, drafting, when you're behind another mm -hmm. car? They're, you know, you get behind a, another no, Race car drivers do this. Mm -hmm. They get behind another car because they draft because the other car's taking the uh, the resistance of the wind mm -hmm. and they ride along until they get their chance to break out. Your kids, by and large, good Christian kids, I've been drafting off of your life. You and dad are the devout Christians. You bring them to church and stuff. Now you're just going to throw them out on their own without a chance for them to really develop their own faith? I don't think it's a good idea. Take a one-year program like Transition One uh, here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, and we teach them how to really focus on life, how to make decisions, how to plan financially, how to balance a checkbook. It's amazing how many of your kids don't even know anything about <laughs> balancing much of anything. Uh, how to make decisions about life and marriage and love and dating and all these things. We spend time. It's not a Bible college. We spend time for several months in the first part of the program just teaching them the basics about life and giving them opportunities to serve. They need to learn to serve. The last three months of the program uh, is we send them 
to, they pick a place, we've got missionaries around the world that take them, and they're safe places where they get to go in and serve. And it's not just a one-week vacation-like missions trip. This is real missions work where they go and they live with these people for three months. And they learn not everywhere in the world has Wi-Fi. They learn not every place in the world has high-definition TVs. They learn not every place has McDonald's. It teaches them to do life. They will be forever changed. Take one year. Put God first in their lives. Go check it out, transition1.org. We're back on the Mark Gardner Show. What do you got? Okay, she says, my husband and I met on a Christian dating website four years ago. Okay. I had been divorced a year and a half, and my husband widowed four months. We married four months after we met. Okay. Our profiles helped tremendously in selecting a suitable match. So there you go, in defense of your online dating. <laughs> When we met, we spent a lot of time talking via email, phone, and on our dates. We uh-huh. ended every date and phone call with prayer, and we never miss praying together at night, she says. We uh-huh. are best friends, passionate lovers, and we don't have arguments. No time for that because we're in our 60s. For a wedding gift, my <laughs> really? son... Because we're in our 60s, and we seem to make time for it. <laughs> make time for arguing? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, we missed that part. I guess so. How's it to my wife? No more arguing. We don't have time we for this. Because apparently, we're going to be dead mm-hmm. any minute now. Okay, so they got a copy of your DVD for a wedding present and watched it several times and get something from it each time. She says, uh, we currently credit our extreme happy marriage to applying what we've learned from your seminar well, bless and you. watch the webcast faithfully. Her question is... Why don't more couples find happiness in their marriages? Because it's really quite simple to obtain. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you can't even begin to answer that question. Read all the books that we've written and all the shows we've done. These are all the reasons why. Why don't? Because it's so simple. No, I think to, some, to a, a large degree, it is true. It's. I preach the simplicity of marriage all the time. Yeah. I've so that's what my, she wants to know. Why, if it's so simple, why don't I people don't know. have happy marriages? I don't know because they're not simple, and they're or they're simple tons, and they can't <laughs> grasp it. Uh, it's really not that, that. That's again. What are some of my advice in my book? You know, be nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't be a jerk. Mm-hmm. The new book. Don't be an ass. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of my advice is unbelievably simple. simplistic. Losing weight is really quite simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just quit eating. <laughs> Right, right. It's true. Well, why are you overweight? Losing weight's really simple, Phil. I mean, not you. <laughs> well, intervention time. Thanks, Dan. No, no, I, that's your dream to you. You should have said that to him. No, because he's lost. No, it is simple, but it's not easy. It's a good right. analogy, actually. It is. You know, losing weight. People say, how have you been losing weight? I said, I quit eating so much. And they look at me like, what do you mean? It's pretty <laughs> simple. Just, it's not easy to stop eating. I just quit eating so much. It, it, I don't like it. Right. Because my body's constantly yelling, I want to eat, I want to eat, I want to eat. You know, but I just, you know, shut Succeeding up. in life at most things, I don't think it's that difficult. Wow, how'd you get to be such a good musician? No, 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 I, I think the it process, is difficult. Yeah. It's not complicated. It's simple. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's simple. It's simple. You want to be a good musician? Practice. Yes. Practice five hours every day. Yes. That's yes. all you got to do. Okay. It's the practicing hard but, five but, hours a day that's hard. But yeah, but then, so they don't want to do it. Anything that's hard, they don't want to do. Yeah. I agree with this lady. I think, uh, absolutely, marriage is not that complicated. Not by a long shot. Uh, I recoil at difficult explanations and long-winded right. explanations on how this is supposed to be and that's supposed to be and these Christians who over-spiritualize marriage and all this other stuff. I just want to scream and pull what little hair I have left off of my head. I agree with her. It is very simple. It can be hard. Well, and people complicate it, and that's why they don't have successful marriages, because when you take something that should be pretty basic and simple and then complicate it, then you're not happy, no. For example, be nice. I don't have to be nice. Why? Because of this and that and this and that. They had all these complications. Yeah. No, none of that. Just They can give me the list all day long why they don't have to be nice. The Just reality nice. is, no, you. even after all that, you, <laughs> you have to be nice. So anyway, interesting. Interesting email. Bless yeah. you, my dear. Yeah. I'm glad that you have found... 
some peace and stuff. I, I will point something out that's a, a little strange, maybe, that maybe people don't want to hear. Uh, while she comes from a divorce, uh, he didn't. He was widowed. Widowed. And one thing about that is there is no competing interest anywhere else. There is total resolution. The next closest you can get to that are people who, oh, of course, they're older too. She's divorced, right. but she's older. Uh, what's really problematic is when you're divorced younger and you try yes. to remarry and you've got kids yes. and exes and all this. Stuff. Man, Very it is really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, even, I know people who were widows as young and got married and they went through what they would tell you was hell mm-hmm. because they still had little kids. Yeah. That's really hard. I know everybody. It's not fair. I got to wait, you know, ten more years or eight more years. My kids are graduate. I know, but you can go ahead and get married. I'm just going to tell you. It's difficult. Most of the people who do it regret it. They just regret it, but they can't see it ahead of time because they want it so bad. Uh, better to not get divorced in the first place is really the ideal there. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're not trying to be cruel. I'm just saying, you try to do this young with kids and everything. It is almost. Impossible, but and highly painful, even if it is possible. Mm-hmm. It's uh, not easy, yeah. and they're looking for the Brady Bunch easy. Yeah, oh, we'll just no, blend together, really, and it, it then it does not get like complicated. Then, then at that point, it does yeah. get complicated. Yes. I will add that to it. Yes, marriage in itself generally is simple. Remarriage with children is highly complicated. Yes, it is. The reason why it's easy for you, dear, is you're in your sixties. Even though you're divorced, you don't have unless you're an unusual lady. <laughs> probably don't have a four year old. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting on your lap. Okay. So that makes it much, yes. much easier. And the fact that his wife yeah. is even gone altogether, he's free as a bird. So yep. anyway, it should. it is easy. I mean, it, it's simple. It's not, not easy. easy. Not simple. easy to pull off. Do you know why it's not, what's not easy is like eating. It's, it's not easy to not be selfish. Yes. All marriages end for one reason. People get selfish. That's the only reason. It comes in lots of shades, but it's only one reason. Selfishness. It's hard not to be selfish. Just like it's, well, one of the most selfish things you can do is eat. Mm-hmm. Right? Especially when you don't need to eat. But we want That's to. That's all about self. Because it, it feels good, and I like it, and the taste, and we sit and talk. and <laughs> Is it complicated to lose weight? It is not. It's not complex. <laughs> but it's hard. Because we want what we want what we want it. And if that doesn't get under control... You literally kill yourself. You realize Americans, most of the aches, pains, misery, problems with their sex lives even, is because they just eat too much. And the wrong stuff. Yeah. Uh, guys don't understand this. A lot of guys, the reason they have low T and, and problems is because they're just a little too fat. And it actually will start affecting you physically. Uh, if it's bad for your heart, it's bad for your willy. <laughs> it's true. There's a direct correlation. Yeah. Anything... That you can eat that can't blow off, you know. I, I know it's probably not good for my heart. If guys really got a picture of that, men would eat healthier. They care more about their willies than oh, they do their hearts. Oh, way more about hearts. their will. When you start, I promise uh. you, the guys who get this, you know, you start putting a direct correlation between your weight and your willy, you'd be surprised how many guys can start losing weight. When that connection gets firmly established, oh, it's a whole other ball game. Men love their willies. We're very attached to our willies. We like them. All right. And uh, if it's bad for your heart, it's bad for your will. And, and a lot of the, all the problems people have in America, overwhelming the diabetes, everything, all because we just don't stop eating yeah. and eating bad things. Yeah. So interesting, fascinating stuff. All right, we'll take a break from this deep, <laughs> wonderful conversation and I'll be back with more emails right after this. Have a marriage dilemma? Email your questions to ask at markgunger.com and Mark can answer them during one of our shows. That's how I stayed away with. We're back on the Mark Gunger Show talking about dieting. In the off break here. <laughs> So we can get back to what we were talking about. What do you got? She says, my husband and I are missionaries and married for three years. One of our supporters is a single woman who had an almost dating relationship with my husband. He told me about their friendship before, and it was fine with me. Although lately I've noticed that this woman has been communicating to my husband and not to us as a couple. You get Mm -hmm. it? She's a financial supporter to them. Mm -hmm. I now felt concerned this woman is trying to get my husband's attention, especially knowing that she really attempted to push a relationship with my husband before we were married. We've tried 
tried to meet up with her and told her that we are now a couple, so we will communicate differently. She seems to not receive it well, uh, since she said that there are communications that are not especially for me, and that if it's professionally related, that only my husband can understand. I know that my husband is faithful to me and, wanted, and wants to put our marriage first before any friendships, but I am just bothered with the way this woman communicates, and since she is a supporter, I don't know how to handle it. I haven't told my husband how I feel yet since I'm trying to search my heart first, whether I am just overthinking it. I would appreciate your help. I don't understand. I do not understand for the life of me. People who write me to tell me about things. But they haven't talked to the husbands yet. She wants to know if she's no, justified just, I in talking no, to him look, first. If it bothers you enough that you have to write me, you should have had this conversation already. I agree. I, I, I remember this one lady, you know, coming to my office. My husband, I found out my husband was taking pictures of his genitalia and emailing them to other women. And she's telling me this horrible. I'm like mortified. They go both go to our church, right? And I said, and, and it took her weeks to come in and see me because I was busy, you know, I'm hard to get a hold of. So finally, I said, well, what did he say? She says, oh, I didn't say anything to him yet. Really? That would be a conversation I, I could mean, not not that, have. That conversation would happen so fast in my house. No way if my wife saw, I was taking pictures of my willy and emailing them to other women, she wouldn't wait for weeks to have an appointment with some pastor to ask, how should I deal with this? Man, are you kidding me? That would have been like an instant conversation. Yes. So I don't understand you, dear. I don't understand. Clearly, this is a big enough problem. You should have talked to him already if you have to write me. You need to talk to him. Straight up. Don't be emailing me and don't be doing anything else to anybody else and figuring out my heart. If it bothers you, talk to him. What's the matter with people? If something bothers you, you tell somebody. I don't like it when you do this. That's all you got to do. I don't understand. I, and she's a missionary. She should know better. Goodness gracious. Go talk to him. If he says, look, she's a psycho crazy cat lady and she gives us $10,000 a year and she wants to send me emails, I just take the emails and that's what I would do. <laughs> as long as your husband's not having any problem with it. If she's saying suggestive sexual things, I don't care if she is a donor, then you got to stop it. The reality is it bugs you because you know she wanted to date him. Mm -hmm. All right, as long as she keeps supporting and she wants to send him emails. Well, it depends on what, like you say, what well, she's you know, saying what are emails, in those emails. And what is he emailing back to her? You say, well, she wants him. Okay, you, that's when you grin. Say, I got him. <laughs> I win, you lose. You're missionaries. Where the heck does this lady live? If you're a missionary to the Philippines and you got some girl who's interested in your husband from Chicago, what do you care? <laughs> it's not like an eminent threat. So you need to talk to him. Come on. Snap out of it. Honestly. They Give just want to think that they make sure they're not overreacting oh my or God. thinking what? of it, you know, in the wrong way. You are overreacting in the negative. You're over not reacting. What? <laughs> You're over not reacting. You should have a normal reaction. I punch you in the face. You should have a reaction to that. Yes. Or let me give this. I take your arm and I stab your hand with a knife and you don't flinch. You're over underreacting, <laughs> under overreacting, whatever. <laughs> There's something wrong with you. Yes. If I can stab you and you don't move, there's something wrong yes. with you. Yeah. Okay? Your reaction should be a very visceral response. Yeah. Actually, if you just see me coming with a knife, <laughs> you move your hand. Yes. If you just leave your hand there and I stab it and you still don't move your yes. hand, there's something really wrong with you physically, mentally. There's something not working in your system. You're not feeling pain. There's people who have diseases where they don't feel right. pain. You would think this is a good thing. No, it's a bad, bad no. thing. It's very dangerous for you not to feel pain. Okay? Pain is a good thing in a lot of respects. Yes. Okay? So there's something wrong with you. This woman is having an overreaction in the negative. In other words, she's... Well, she's oh, reacting. She's because, reacting, but she's not but doing just, something. But not telling it. him. Right. She's reacting she and, and not is. reacting, and, and she's concerned about it. She gives you the whole list of what's wrong, and and her whole answer to that is send me an email and and not talking to her. How can you not talk to your husband? Because she's afraid. Well, that's bad. So I think what's she's, that afraid, about she's afraid of causing a problem. She's afraid of. I, I, I would well, guess this, that this is a she's premise. Afraid. You, she lives. My dear lady, you live like this in fear. Obviously, you're afraid of your husband or you're afraid of something. You're living in fear. You keep living in fear. That will destroy your marriage quicker and faster and more long-lasting than this woman can. 
Your fear, a lot of you girls don't understand, your fear of confronting your husbands is what destroys your marriages. They don't understand this. Because they never confront them because they're so afraid. Good grief. This is a conversation you should have had already. How come Susie's still emailing you? Uh, she wants, you know. Well, I don't like it. Yeah, she gives us $10,000 a year. She lives in Chicago. What do we care? All right, we'll just make sure it's not inappropriate. It's like, you know. You have this conversation. You should already have the conversation. No more. Don't write me anymore. Unless you have that conversation. And then write me because I want to see what happens. All right. Caution. The Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. That's right. Yeah, Sorry, my life. Yeah. All right. What do you got? Okay. My fiance and I are currently going through, through fiance. premarital counseling. I have a fiance. fiance. As a Jerry, t- have you met my fiance? Fiance. Seinfeld. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. As the topic of children came up for discussion, we agreed that we both wanted to have three or four children. Mm-hmm. My fiance. My fiance. Mentioned. Does see my fiance? <laughs> he mentioned that if we had a child that was physically or mentally disabled, then he would not keep that child but give it up for adoption. Oh, man. Although every living cell and fiber in me wanted to explode on him, uh-huh. I calmly told him that. I cannot agree to have children when you think like that because that means I will be carrying a child for nine months in fear, not knowing if you will accept it or not. Uh-huh. His family not like and my fishing. family, right? Keeper, throwback. His family and my family are healthy and there's no trace of mental disability on either side. Therefore, that is not really a concern for me. There's yet. a trace of mental disability uh-huh. in him. I want to know that if we have a child. <laughs> Who thinks like this? I'm going to have a kid. He's not doing well. Something wrong with him. Let's, let's toss him back in the pond. Right. What, what the heck is that? She, Your husband's mentally it, deficient. It's her fiancé. Fian- fiancé. She says, am I wrong for not agreeing to have children when my partner thinks like this? I'd dump him. I would dump him. That is a sign. You can't get more selfish than that. Right. There is no more sign of selfishness right? than that. Right. What if she gets sick? What if she I, gets exactly. cancer? What if she be, ends up paralyzed from a car accident? That was going to be gonna my next Is he going to throw you back night. into the pond? Yes, he will. I would dump your fiancé. Has anyone seen my fiancé? Yes, we threw him in the bottom of the well. Okay, I just have to throw this in here because this just might make you mad. I asked her, well, what did the pastor say when this came up in the session? She said, he said not to worry about it since it won't happen. Oh, he's an idiot. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I, You know, hey, maybe they're married by now. It's been a while. How long ago? Did no, 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 I don't think so. I, I would this dump him. pretty recent. I would absolutely dump him. Until he comes to a come to Jesus moment and pledges and swears That's to you. That's a rather selfish piece of crap. crap. That's exactly what he is. So, I and, and Diane's right. What if something else goes wrong? That stuff's hard. You know, it's been hard. My wife's been sick. It's hard. And it's harder than I ever thought it would be. And I haven't handled it as well as I wish I would have handled it. And uh, we're still not completely out of the woods on the deal. Still something always popping up. It's hard. Honestly, when they said in sickness and in health, I thought they were talking about the flu. Mm-hmm. You know? She has the sniffles today. You got the sniffles? She broke her leg. You know, I threw up her once while, you know, that was it. You know, I, I, that's what I thought they were talking about, right? Now, it can get a lot more complicated than that. And yeah, you can be paralyzed. He will, this is the kind of man who will dump you if you get sick. That happens all the time, by the way. Yeah, very Women high, who have breast cancer. What yeah, happens when you get breast cancer and, they, and they cut off both your boobs? Yep. He'll, he'll dump you. This is the point of, of the whole pre-marriage counseling thing. You're supposed to be looking for some deep flaws. You found one. This is it. This is a deal breaker, in my opinion. It doesn't get much more deeply no. flawed than this, in my opinion. Oh, I agree with you. I, this, this is bad. That's really... Ri- you are talking to one sick, selfish man. Any guy who thinks, I will have a son or a daughter... And if she is deformed in any way, we're going to get rid of her, is one sick, selfish man, in my opinion. Wow. Isn't that? Wow. I'm stunned. Yeah. Stunned. You should dump him today. Today. Before there's any other time, you dump him immediately. Good night. Oh, he'll, he'll freak when you dump him. 
And you're jumping from your pet. Well, how come you're jumping? Because he said such and such. I'm like, what if I get sick? He'll dump me. Who thinks like that? Well, and the pastor's like, ah, don't worry about it. You're a pastor. You need another pastor, by happen. the way. You need a new pastor. Well, what he's mean, not what? thinking beyond, well, that's you know. Well, a classic piece response. Yeah. Oh, what, what a nimwit. Why are you worrying about something that will never happen? Well, nimwit? because dimwit. Dimwit. Nimrod, dimwit. Nimrod. You, I got my nims all crossed your... My, he's, he's, a dimrod, yep. he's a dimrod dimwit. Yeah. He's a dimrod. Dim something. Dim-witted. Dim sum. Dim, mm, no, I, want I know. <laughs> I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> Phil, I thought exactly the same <laughs> thing. I want to order some Chinese food now. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Isn't I, that te- terrible? I'm sorry. That was bad. You, you've, taken, you've taken our... It's so bad, you've actually taken our breath away. That's how bad this guy is that you're your fiancé. We don't have this visceral response usually. No. I mean, we have bad responses and stuff, but... I'm like this is shocking actually like that someone would say wind, that wind out of my lungs kind of don't be an idiot don't don't marry this man dump him today until he comes back and swears <laughs> that wow. he would never do. and then you how will you know you, you know what do you uh, say that make him agree to adopt a, uh, a special needs child yeah. I'll marry you when you agree to adopt one. Yeah. Then I know See, your heart has changed yeah. and you're not a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I know I won't do it. Yeah, okay. Then yep. let's let's agree yep. that we're going to adopt our first thing we're going to adopt yep. a special needs child. Yep. See what he says then. Yep. I think you're headed for trouble. Oh, I think you're headed yep. for a disaster. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. What's sad is you're just finding this out now. Yep. When he's become your fiance. Yep. <laughs> I need a shower. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> That was just awful. I'm so, I can't get over that was how quite mortified I was. You. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. okay. Next. Are you ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Please Jesus. change the channel. My best friend. Make it go away, Daddy. <laughs> okay. My best friend and I have been married for six years. He's 38 and I'm 33. No kids. I'm the one with the height. So, woman, ready? I'm the one with the higher sex drive in the relationship. Sometimes They're married? I, yes. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I'd like my husband to initiate more sex. It uh-huh. feels like it's always me doing the initiating. Uh-huh. We've talked about this a lot. He always says, if I ever want to have sex with him, just let him know. Uh-huh. We've talked about the bead method. He's not interested. In fact, he jokingly <laughs> said that if I ever want to initiate sex, that I should use refrigerator magnets and spell sex on the fridge. <laughs> She says, oh, yeah, right. What happens when the visitors see that and start asking questions? <laughs> I think it would be great. Says, Do you have any other suggestions so I don't feel like I'm the one initiating all the time? Or is this just something I'm going to have to learn to deal with, given that I'm the one with the higher sex drive? Yeah, just get over it. Everybody who has the higher sex drive has the same complaint. Everybody. Every relationship. Everywhere. On the place, face of the planet. <laughs> can't even talk to Face of the planet. Face, face of the earth is really what I meant to say. The planet would suffice. Although specifically, it wasn't any planet. This planet. It would be this, this planet. This planet. And the face of this planet. Because if you're on the face of another planet, you're probably dead because there's no oxygen. All right. uh, they all have this complaint. Whoever, and it's either the guy or the girl. And if it's the guy or the girl who has a higher sex drive, their complaint constantly to their spouse is, how come you never initiate? I'll tell you why. Because they don't have the, because you have the higher sex drive. Because they don't even get a chance to initiate. Because people with a higher sex drive are coming back for round two. <laughs> Well, the first person hasn't gotten over round one yet. It's just the reality of it. Okay? They just have the higher sex. So they tend to be the initiator. Just get over it. It's fine. Don't whine. I wish you'd do... Yeah, I wish you'd all do all kinds... I wish I had a million dollars to spend today. Just today. On just extracurricular stuff. You know, like a new boat. Your motorcycle with a sidecar. That's not going to be a million dollars. I'm going to get that one. <laughs> okay. We well, could get many things for that million dollars. I'd probably get a really good boat. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? There's all kinds of stuff that I want. Yeah. I would, you know, people, uh, people with higher sex drives wish the person they were married to would just ravage them all the time. Do you know why you wish that? Because you have the higher sex drive! That's why they want. That's what that means. I want to be wanted. <laughs> that's what, that's, it is what it is. But you have the higher sex drive, so rather than wait for him to respond that way, because you have a higher sex drive, you ravage him. Now, as long as he's saying, hey, anytime you want, let me, 
Consider yourself blessed by God. Shut up. Why do you care? Go ravage the boy. It's as, as it, long it, as he's you not. You have to use the right word. It's ravish. Ravish. Not ravage. Ravage, <laughs> ravage means to destroy. If, if you have really ravage. good sex, it could be ravaging. It could be, but <laughs> it could be. Really, it's ravage. If he's not limping, you weren't trying. <laughs> That's right. Oh my God! I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> He doesn't need a pair of crutches. You weren't doing your job right. Ravishing. Oh, ravishing. Oh, I don't know. English is new to me. You okay. just kept saying it over and over, I so know. I needed <laughs> to hop in there. I'd let it go if it was one time. <laughs> but you get the picture here, right? Uh, yeah, I know. The reason why the people want that is because uh, they, they have this higher sex I know. drive. The other person doesn't think in those terms because they're I not know. wired up all the time. <laughs> now, here's the thing. My guess is, if you go, and who knows, it's all relative. Let's say you go two weeks with absolutely no sex. You haven't initiated anything. I bet you, by then, he will start initiating. Maybe. I'll bet you. I'll just do it. It'll look different, mm-hmm. but he'll start touching and reaching and they'll start responding. That, if they're Maybe. normal, that's what will happen. The reason why that doesn't happen is because you never wait for two weeks. You're grabbing him. Every day or every other day or three times a day, whatever your thing is, I don't know what it is. It is what it is. So my answer is stop, stop, stop. I kind of like the refrigerator magnet deal, actually. Just, you know. I do. I, I would have I, I, no well, problem. That's not a bad idea. I would have no problem. But no, here's the other thing. No, no, here. He's, he sounds like he's up. He's fine with Yeah, just let me know. Exactly, let me know. Just he doesn't want to do the bead thing. But here's the thing. The higher sex drive always wants the other person to buy the bead thing. Yeah, they do. You see it at the seminar all the time. Yeah. It's, do this. Here, here. Yeah. You get this? Yeah. It, believe it or not, it's the person with the lower sex drive who needs to, who needs to offer these kind of yeah. solutions. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah. This is what I would do. <laughs> this is funny. I would have the letters on the refrigerator, and when it's kind of at a low level, I'd stick the S up there. <laughs> When it gets a little higher, I put the E up there. <laughs> by the time I put the X, dude, you better come through for me. Come, come on, baby, let's go. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Why does he initiate? Give it you some warning. You don't give him a chance to initiate it. That's, that's the reality of it. The higher sex type, you don't give the other person, depending on how high they are. So, you know, every time you think you want him to initiate, stick your head in the toilet and give yourself a slurry. <laughs> And awaken out of your delusion. It doesn't even have to be sex. You get some women who get upset because he never wants to do the dishes. Or he <laughs> never wants to do the laundry. Right. Well, if you ask him to do it, will he do it? Yeah. yeah. It's the want to oh, want dude, to do you... again. We, uh, there was a great cartoon in the Sunday's paper. There were th- Did you see the Sunday's no. paper? Three cartoons that were actually relational based. All based on the subject. It was hilarious. The, the first one is the guy he's trying to do something. Well, don't do it that way. And... And then he tries to do something this way. Well, she, don't do it that way. And then she says, when you do the dishes, put make sure you, don't, you do it this way and not this way. Anyway, toward the end, he finally gives up. And then the next frame is she's meeting with her girlfriend going, you know, I don't know. He just he doesn't want to help me. <laughs> so, Wonder why. Of course, it's hilarious. But see, most people can't, the women can't even see this. No. You're such a psycho, and you're complaining about everything the way you want it, and that he doesn't want to do it, or what Phil says. He doesn't want to do it. I don't care. See, my wife doesn't care. My wife doesn't care. Just do it. Just do it. But these girls, there's something wrong with them, Diane. There's something wrong in their heads. Help me to understand them. I don't understand them. They not they watch only, too many movies. Not only do they See want their husband to do something, they want him to want to yes. do it. And he doesn't want to. They, I mean, it's just like there's something crazy with them. My goodness, I'm so glad I'm not them. I'd go insane. Oh, it must be awful. <laughs> It must be awful to be them. I'm just serious. If that's what you think, how awful would that be to be you? I know. That, that all your life, not only do you get, want people to do something, you want them to want to do it. And if they don't want to do it, your heart is heavy. Just, oh, my gosh. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> what a horrible way to live. No. Oh, thank you, God. I'm not one of those. We'll take a break. We'll be back, back with more <laughs> right after this. Download your free Mark Gunger app today to see all of the latest from the world of Mark Gunger. Cool. We are back. We got. She says, I am not married. I'm 25 years old and just started dating a new guy three weeks ago. I've known him for six months. Is he a new guy or new to her? 
A new guy? What does he, that mean? He used to not be a guy, Diane? Oh, he is. No, he's a guy. He's not newly a guy. Oh, my gosh. She says. Hey, I got to open everything today. Yeah, right. <laughs> just to get clarification. You should have emailed back. Just to clarify. Just to clarify. Is, is, he, is this a new guy? A guy? I wouldn't even think that because I'm not demented like you. Okay. Okay. okay so okay, anyway, he's a new guy to her. Okay. Yeah, he is a bit emotionally withheld. She says, which I understand is a result from his past, so it will take time for him to open up. But um, I am wondering how to communicate effectively with him that I need more affection and that it is important to me. He is not very affectionate, and I am very oh, right, affectionate. Right, right, right. This is how you do it. You go. I need more affection. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me do it again in case you missed it. Hold it. If you're married, to, you're with someone that you need more affection from, this is what you say to them. I need more affection! <laughs> you think she got it? She's, yeah. Okay. okay she That's says, I have mentioned it to you. Or you do what most women do and you just hand them a book and assuming they're going to read it. Yes. And then figure it out. <laughs> or just pray that the Lord will put it on his heart to understand your needs. You could do that. Or you could talk to your girlfriends about how you need more affection, but he doesn't give it. Or you can write to me uh, and ask, how do I get more affection, but never ask him <laughs> for affection. She's asking. I mean, she asked him. But I'm saying it's like that one lady. Yes. Who, uh, I have a good problem. I haven't talked to him yet. <laughs> yes. You could, she... do, you could do the crazy <laughs> way to, to the answer, or you can just tell him, I need more affection. Okay, he says, I mentioned it to him previously. What do you mean, mentioned? Me mentioned. Mentioned it to him. No, 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 no. Mentioned, you know, I just kind of. No. Hey, you! Will you just. I need more affection! One more time. Hey! Go to the next camera. Yeah, close up. I need more affection from you! All right, that's how you make that clear. She said right. she mentioned it. <laughs> To him previously in a non-confrontational and kind way. That's your problem. <laughs> he stepped it up a little, but not uh -huh. much. For instance, he won't hold my hand or kiss me very much. What uh -huh. is the best way I could go about this to develop a healthy and loving relationship? Okay. Dump it. Dump it. There is no healthy and loving relationship. Just, just, you will, he will drive you crazy your entire life because he won't give you what you need. Run! <laughs> Just dump him. Dump him. What is the matter with you people? You're the ones. I'm telling you. We should have tattooed on their forehead. Do not counsel. You marry this man. They need a tattoo on your head. Do not counsel. It's like I got a pair of pants. That says, Do not uh, wash in a, you know, oh, dry clean only. Like yeah. that. Okay. Dry clean only. I could only, which is a drag because I don't want to dry clean it. Okay. So dry clean it. So you know. You need to put people like you. Do not counsel, because you're going to marry this guy, and then you're going to be miserable, and you're going to cry because it had the affection, and you're going to go to pastors, and you're going to stick a straw in their brain, you're going to suck the life out of them. Everybody in your life, you're going to slowly drain the life force out of everybody, take everybody's energy and time and resources mm -hmm. just to counsel you through, because you're so unhappy, because you're married to a man who has no affection. Or, or, <laughs> you could do the radical concept, dump him, and find a boy who is affectionate. Why don't you do that? Why do you all date these guys you know you can't stand them. You don't like them. They irritate you. They don't give you what you want. Whatever. Why are you dating them? That's the point of the dating process to find out what they're like. When you say to them, hey, I need affection, and he doesn't get it, you dump him and you move on to take a break on your medication. <laughs> Want more of Mark? Visit markgunger.com. There you will find everything that Mark has to offer. Do I dare let myself sit a while and ponder? No, you don't. You don't do that. Do I, I, I don't understand these people. Let my heart they date people that fundamentally they don't like. They like them, but there's something that's really a problem for them. It's not just quite right. And they keep trying to force it. They're taking a round peg and trying to slam it into a yeah. square hole. They watch too much HGTV. Uh, yeah, these All the fixer -upper uppers. Shows. Just fixer upper. No, I don't know. I, I'm of the very odd perspective that you should like the person you're dating and want to be with them. If, for example, every time you saw them, they made you, I don't know, vomit. Every time you say, I would suggest, you know, 
maybe this isn't the match for you, okay? I, I don't understand. If it was that clear, though, they wouldn't ask you the question. It's not <laughs> yes, like they they're would. vomiting about it. Yes, they would. It. We just haven't no, gotten it yet. No, Someone's no, going to no, write no, us no. a question. I have my fiancé. No, oh, for gosh I love sakes. my fiancé. And every time I see him, I, bleh, I vomit. I don't, oh, you know, now you're not even being serious. <laughs> You're just being ridiculous. The, 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 I never am ridiculous. So yes. just wait. That's going to be the email no. coming someday. And no. what should I do? No. What should I do? I don't know. Here. Do you have a cure? Do you have a pill for that? No. How about you get away from it? Look at look at the description for the Fixer Upper show. I love uh-huh. that show. That's my favorite. The first rule of real estate is location, location, location. But what happens when a buyer's only option in the right location is a house with dreadful design and a chunky layout? Some of these girls, I think, I feel like they find a guy... There's a certain thing they're looking for. The location is right. The location is right. That's why they talk about what a wonderful guy he yeah. is. Uh, but we need oh, to tear except, down all the walls. <laughs> except that he has shows me no affection, or he's got this, or he's got that. And, uh, yeah, but the problem is, you can fix a house. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you why. <laughs> you ask why do they do but, that? But you can't fix. That's what they don't think. I guess they think they can fix them. Oh, sure they do. I'm sure that's what they think. What they What's shocking to them is the realization you can't. No. You can you just take it at face value either or move on. Either you can live the rest of your mm-hmm. life with a man who shows you no affection. If you're okay with that, then marry him. If you're not, then don't marry him. It's just that simple. I don't know what people they want they want the in-between answer. I want him to be what I want. Can you fix it? No. No, can't make them that way. Can't make them that way. That's why there's dating. You find out what they're like when you find out that then you then you don't do it. Yes. So I just well, you can ask for more affection, but then you have to be okay realizing that for the rest of your life, you are probably going to have to ask, Constantly ask for, for more yes. affection. Constantly and ask. if you're good with that and have no problem with it, but the problem is, is that you're prob- not okay with it. And the problem is not how you're asking. How do I ask? That's what I was making fun of. How do I ask? You, you just ask. Well, she's not, she's not getting what she wants, so she figured it's the way she's asking. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the it's the word. Thing. She needs to come into it's, the it's room, the... like in the producers. Hug me, kiss me, <laughs> hug me, kiss me, <laughs> feel me, touch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dress up like the old lady in the gray hair while you do it. That'll make it happen too. You know, they they want them, that person they're dating, to be something they're not. They're not going to be. They're it's not. the way it is. So. The reason for dating is to discover that. Then you stop dating and go find somebody else. Now, if you think this is my only chance ever for marriage, then you have to decide, am I okay being married with no affection for the rest of my life? If the answer is no, then don't marry him. It's just that simple. They, they can't grasp it as that simple. No. It's just, they just can't get their head around it. Here's the sad thing, is you will most likely marry him, and then you're going to suck the ever-loving life out of every body around you for the rest of your life, asking for prayer and for counseling, when none of this had happened in the first place. All right? See ya! Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!